are people who have also had this, whether they've been on the left or they've been on the right. You can have this political freedom to change, to challenge the political system, but the minute you take up arms, then you move in another direction. And that's why I think that any movement that's successful, one of the cr criteria of looking at them are those that make defense second. You can't avoid defending, but you have to make defense second. And that's my argument for the successes of the Students for Democratic Society, because I think those white kids were empowering themselves and saying we are part of a movement to make America better. Yes. Right? I think they inspired and they coalesced with black students and stood in front lines, I remember in my experience, in ways we couldn't do. They used that white privilege mm -hmm. in a way that was fantastic, right? Because we got our ass beat and killed, yes. right? And they stood right on those ground. I'm saying that's a good thing, all right? But I'm also saying that turning in on violence for the Black Panther Party, because it became undermined, or SDS, those factions, and they had factions. We created a Black Liberation Army, remember? Yes. And that army was swooped up in a very short time, and half of the people are dead, and the other half are exiled from China to Cuba to and Angela Davis, remember yes. her? Yep. Accused of uh, fantasy that she was going to do something when there were even no laws that said you could conspire. I didn't think any damn thing I wanted, a democracy. But she couldn't think about changing her own society without being called a communist in the yes. All right? So I'm just saying that, you know, read the history of what worked and read the history of knowing that people sacrificed across the spectrum. It wasn't just one group, and they were interlocking. And that, to me, was the height and the most powerful lesson that came from working in those two groups, SDS and Black Panther Party. There is another chapter after this. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You know where I'm going. Yes. <laughs> because there is a group that emerged out of SDS. Yes. And it emerged out of black power. And that was women. Yes. Right? <laughs> women. <laughs> <laughs> and they did not take up arms. No, nope. they didn't. <laughs> they organized. They organized. They Absolutely. Organized. And they organized across class. Yes. And they organized across race. Not always successfully, but <laughs> in the beginning, yes. Yes, very strong. And they organized across generation. Yep. So That's the students sitting in my office yesterday saying, well, you know, we have the center to, so women's liberation was all college women. I said, no. no. Not so well, my, my grandma couldn't have been part of it because she was like 40 at the time. Oh, no. <laughs> 40 was like it. Yes. So not, or not becoming violent, Organizing in your neighborhoods and remembering that the personal, Lindsay, yes. do we have to have a war? No, we've already got a war. Yes. It's a war on our personal lives, it's a war on our families. Mm -hmm. A war is being conducted. And if people can remember that your personal life is political, is being made political, people can be organized in their communities and they don't have to take up guns. And the women's movement proves that. Take it up. <laughs> <laughs> practice of organizing, right? The practice of organizing. Um, that actually, this, 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 this uh, sort of uh, time continuum that I put up, uh, uh, Professor Scott and I have been arguing about us, they're talking about SDS and Black Panther Party. And if you notice, not, the SDS uh, and the Black Panther Party uh, did not achieve their goals. The third part. The women's movement actually came out of that new left nexus and has achieved a lot of those. Not all, but a lot. But meanwhile, there was another group that was organizing. There's a guy named, um, oh God, you know, um, uh, uh, George W. Bush's uh, uh, Rowe, Carl Rowe. 
Yeah, it's the same age as I am, and he was organizing with the young Republicans at some college somewhere in the world. Young Americans for and, and they organized and organized and organized, and they got power. Yes. They, and now, and now that's a whole other thing. The, the, the right taking power in this country is a whole other thing than the left taking power. It's probably a lot easier. Yes. But they did get power, and they've been in power for a long time, and they're still in power. So I have asked myself the question, what went wrong with all of our infighting and all of our concepts about world revolution? And what did these guys do right? And the answer is, they went for political power. And political power works through the ballot box. And it works through grassroots organizing. And so my conclusion is that <laughs> probably money, money, money. Well, it works through money, but we've got, you know, we have 60 to 70 percent of, of, of public opinion already agrees with us on issues like economic justice, militarization, the need to help the, uh, uh, to marshal the, 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 the resources of society for, for the good of all. You know, it's just that these other people are so much better organized. I know the money, but we've got George Soros, and we've got all, there's a lot of money that's going into the Democratic Party. Yeah, but there's something missing. What? It's not helping. Uh, you have the people who get uh, elected don't represent the values of the 65% right. Because the base is not organized. Half of all the people who are eligible, who could vote, don't vote. Right. And there's a lot of people who can't vote. Yes. You know, the, the, you mentioned uh, black uh, uh, prisoners. Um, yeah. uh, millions of, of black males are, are disenfranchised, you know, by law. That's a foreign slave. You talk about grassroots organizing, and, and that was done. That was done a couple of years ago, and it put in the first black president in the history okay. of the United I'm States. Okay, I'm glad you're saying that. And, and everybody's disappointed. And compromised. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. We organized for three or four months in the fall of 2008. I, I, I went door to door. I had kids from New York sleeping on, uh, New Mexico's a battleground state. I had them sleeping on the floor, and we, they were up every night until 2 in the morning, and they went out every morning at 7. It was incredible. It was, a, it was an amazing grassroots effort of organizing that lasted a few months and believed, and even I believed this, that's by electing one man, it's going to change the power structure of this country. Mm -hmm. That's absurd. Absurd. It's, it was it was magical thinking, and I, I can just say I drank the Kool Aid too. I believed in that magical thinking. The powers the, the power of this in this country is held by the corporations, the banks, the military. They buy Congress. Yeah. People don't vote. They don't participate. What I'm saying is that we have they do vote, but the people that they vote for are have tools of the corporation. Exactly. All the Many, same puppets. Half the population that could vote does not vote. People are disenfranchised in their heads. <coughs> they're demoralized, they're drunk, they're taking drugs, their husbands are beating them up, they don't feel that they know the difference between a Democrat and a Republican, they don't they, they've given up. People are demoralized. We have to have a grassroots movement that lasts the rest of your lifetime and your children's lifetime that will fight this power. And we, and we know now what the power is. It's not what, that one man can change it. You know, I just want to say about, about Obama. The New Yorker, a few weeks ago, had a, an article uh, by a, a reporter named Ryan Lizza, L-I-Z-Z-A, about that, that analyzed Obama's notes, his briefing notes that he was given every morning from 2009 to now, or every night actually, and he would make comments. Every single one of his comments was, what can we get through Congress? That was the only comment there was. What can we get through Congress? And the answer is nothing. Meanwhile, Congress got completely robbed or, or stolen by, 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 by the Tea Party. And the right was out organizing. I know they have money, but how many of us go to our Democratic Party uh, precinct meetings? You know, we've got to get this thing going and move towards power. The Democratic Party is the brand. 
Now, if you want a third party, cool, build it. But it's got to be a party. And I don't think a third party is going to work in this country. It's going to be the Democratic Party. I hate the Democratic Party. I can't stand to go to my Democratic county meetings. I despise the people I'm with. And yet, I have to do it because I'm organizing around a, 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 to build a, a political faction within the Democratic Party to transform the Democratic Party. We've got to, I don't see any alternative. These guys went for power. They didn't go for power. They killed themselves, and the government killed them. There has to be some lessons from all of this. Now, just one more thing, organizing. It has to do not with, with signs of slogan. It has to do with relationship building. That's organizing. It takes years to know the people that you're working with and for them to trust you. People change their ideas and then their actions because of trust and friendship. That's how, that's, that's where, where do our ideas come from? They come from our friends, oddly enough. They don't come because it's all logically figured out. It's who do you know? I fell in with a group of, SD, of SDS people, and I like these people, and I got their ideas. Re relationship building, this was taught to us by SNCC, Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. And it was based on a model that they learned from the black churches, rural churches. Um, a, a, a genius by the name of Ella Jo Baker. I really suggest that people study um, this woman's life and her ideas and her practice in SNCC. She was, a, she was 60 years old when she helped form SNCC. And she taught the kids, mostly black kids from historic black colleges, how to organize. And the organizing was lateral. It wasn't top down. So if anybody wants to know about leadership and all that stuff, it has to do with building relationships okay. over a long period of time. In my precinct in Albuquerque, New Mexico, I am the precinct chair <laughs> of the Democratic Party. And I know, I'm beginning to know, the people, my neighbors, and who votes and who doesn't vote. And that's my work at the moment. I'm also doing economic, uh, or rather environmental justice work. Uh, and, and so I'm just saying this is a long-term thing that's going to last the rest of your lives till we get the power back. But it's our only chance. I don't see any other alternative. Did you want to come? Yeah. Um, you kind of have it on the head, kind of, pretty much. But um, what I was going to add is um, this isn't really, people don't really like, get how this can be done. Because my little, uh, example, we'll go back to Nicaragua. How it actually happened in Nicaragua was not like, some guy going up there and saying, we're going to do this. No, it was actually done 15 to 10 years before it actually started by this guy, Carlos Fonseca. He was a teacher in like a rural village out in Ma near Matagalpa, which is like in the north. He got a lot of friends and he taught a lot of kids. And he also taught them that these situations are not right. And these were just young kids. When he died, it actually affected the community a lot because he was like a major member of the community. 10 years later, those kids grew up, and their friends who were friends with them were like, oh, I can't let them get shot at university, I should go help them. And then they get into the revolution. So the friends the friends are coming, and then this is actually where my family comes in, is um, my uncle, who's the richest person in like half the, co at half the country at the time, he becomes swept up in this because his friends are all in this. And so he just takes his entire fortune to it, starts gun smuggling, and becomes one of the biggest benefactors, the Sammy's biggest um, benefactor person. But the person that gives the most money, and that's how the whole revolution started in 76, is that they had the means, they had the capabilities, and they had the manpower because the relationship was already set 10 years before.